You've heard the statement said, give credit where credit is due. That's what we're going to talk about tonight, giving credit where credit is due. I'm glad you're here with me wherever you are. I hope this video finds you well. Let's just dive into the scriptures. John 3.27 says, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. Such a short verse, but a powerful verse, spoken from John the Baptist to his disciples who were asking him questions about why certain things were happening the way they were. And so I want to talk about tonight about us taking credit for the gifts of God. Our pride maybe being inflared and saying, boy, look at all the stuff that I've done, right? Look at all this stuff and things that I've accumulated and I've done because I've worked hard and I've earned money and I've done these things. That is a poor way as a believer in the Lord Jesus and submitted to his will to look at things playing out around you. Because it says very clear here in John 3.27 that you can't receive anything unless it's given to you by heaven. So the very fact that you're able to work and breathe and eat and digest food and have your being is a gift from heaven. And so every day there should be a prayer of thanksgiving given up to heaven for the very fact that you slept through the night soundly and are now able to get up and to carry on with your day. Oh, how gracious the Lord is to us. How gracious and majestic and merciful he is to his people. And so tonight, I want to kind of focus in on how we look and perceive different things. When we get a job promotion, right? Our initial reaction is to go, man, I did a good job. I, I, I did this and I did that. I worked hard. I stayed late. And I, I really put the time in for the old boss. Instead of saying, thank you, God for allowing me to be better taken care of, to have this financial raise, to, to help my family and to make sure there's food on the table and that we have all our needs met, surely you are a good and gracious God. And when we take credit for the things that God has given us, we do him a disservice. We don't honor him. We dishonor him by putting all of the attention upon ourselves and upon the fact that we think we did it in our own strength, which we know can do nothing. It comes to nothing. It ends in nothing to do things in your own strength, but to give credit to God and all his ways. Now let's go to Daniel chapter four, verse 28 and 31. Daniel chapter four, 28 through 31. So let me set the stage for you. Nebuchadnezzar has this dream about a tree. It's a massive tree. It's a huge tree. It goes up to heaven. It has abundant fruit. It has abundant foliage. And it provides shade and protection for animals and birds alike. And then all of a sudden, a watchman, a messenger from heaven comes and tells it to be cut down. Strip the branches, cast the fruit, scatter the animals, but leave the stump bound with bronze and iron in the ground. And he doesn't know what it means. And so he calls all the diviners and, and soothsayers, as he so often would do in, in those times in ancient Babylon and ancient Persia when there was a, a hard question to be answered. They called the magicians and the wizards and the astrologers to look at the stars, to do incantations and potions, to show them what this mystery was. And none of them could. But then he called Daniel who God had given Daniel the power of interpreting visions and dreams. And Daniel tells him, you are the tree. You are the king of kings of this particular time in history. But you're getting ready to have everything taken from you. And you will be made to roam around like a beast. And all of your glory will be stripped from you. And listen to what Daniel says. 20, verse 27 of verse 4. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Daniel essentially says you need to humble yourself. You need to stop 
what you're doing. You need to stop being sinning and sinning and sinning and trampling the poor. And you need to do the right thing and you need to humble yourself. And the Lord will honor, hopefully the Lord will honor that. And this terrible thing won't happen to you. Well, let's, let's read what happens to King Nebuchadnezzar. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of the 12th month. He was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar. To you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from men. And your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like an ox. And seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like an ox. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew like eagle's feathers and his nails like the bird claws. So, I want you to look at how this trial had to end, when it finally stopped. And at the end of the time, I lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him whom lives forever. So, Daniel warns the king, the king rejects Daniel's warning. You can imagine how that conversation went. I appreciate that, Daniel. Thank you for interpreting that dream. That was rather troubling to me. Uh, I hear you. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. So I do appreciate why you came in. You're dismissed. And you can imagine Daniel turning around and leaving. It doesn't say he, he, he gives him a warning. And then since he's the king, he leaves his presence, I'm sure. And the king goes about his day in and day out like nothing's going on. Nothing's happening. And as we see, he gives this proclamation of pride, right? He, he puts the credit upon himself. He does not honor God. He does not humble himself. He gets even worse as we see this. And while it was still coming out of his mouth, a word came from heaven. Everything that was said about you by Daniel is now going to take place. And Nebuchadnezzar, as we know, goes to the fields and is a madman and, and, and eats grass like an ox and, and roams around like an animal. And that's where he lives for seven years. But at the end, what does he have to do? He has to praise and honor the Most High. He has to acknowledge that God is sovereign, that God is holy, that God is the one who does all of this. He is in power because of God. He will lose his power because of God. And he has his existence because of God. In your life, you will have many opportunities to bless the Almighty or to take the credit for yourself. And it will not go well with you if the Almighty has blessed you over and abundantly and you consistently take the credit for yourself. There, You should not be surprised that one day all of those good things become stripped from you because you are not able to look up to heaven and acknowledge that the reason that you're able to prosper the way you are is because of God's good graces. And you will find yourself in the position that Nebuchadnezzar was in when he ends up doing the exact same thing you will end up doing and you will find yourself in trials and tribulations because you cannot honor and give credit to the one that has given you all those things. It's a very dangerous thing to try to take the holy and honor that belongs to the Lord. I want us to go to our final scripture tonight, which is in the book of Acts. Acts 12, more specifically, verses 19 through 24. Now, so we have this situation uh, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of, the Jesus, of Jesus Christ. And we have the Acts of the Apostles here. And this is like a little blurb in chapter 12. I'm going to read it to you. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord, and having Blastus, the king's personal 
aid their friend. They asked for peace because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne, and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Wow, right? We look at Nebuchadnezzar and he gets another shot, right? We look at Herod, he gets no other shot. He, he, <laughs> and, I, and here we see he's in front of a large crowd. He's giving an oration. And then the people keep shouting back to him. This is a God, not a man. This is the voice of a God, not a man. You know, this is all, you know, again, they need his food, right? They need Herod's food. So you can imagine they're really going to lay it on thick because they don't want him to be angry anymore. They, they would like to continue to survive. And so Herod just soaks it all in. And what does it say? Because he didn't give glory to God. Because he didn't look unto heaven and say, no, no, no. It's not me, it's him. It's not me, it's him. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a reflector. When people praise us, we're supposed to give it back to him. Praise us, give it back to him. It's not me, it's him. It's not me, it's him. I am the tool, he is the hand. I am the clay, he is the potter. I am a servant, he is the master. We must know our place. And we must continue to acknowledge our station and acknowledge God for being our sustainer and being our true north. Guys, give credit where credit's due and give God what is God's for you owe your existence to him. May God bless you wherever you are.